All right. In our interview today, it's a great pleasure to introduce Yang Ahmad Berhormat, Mr. Lim Guan Eng, the Chief Minister of Penang with us today. Mr. Lim is also the Secretary General of Democratic Action Party, DAP. Good evening, Mr. Lim, and thank you for sparing your time to be with us today. Uh, good evening. It should be good morning over there. <laughs> thank you. Jumping straight into my Q&A, my first question will be about Penang. Seven years of governing Penang, what is your one proudest achievement so far? Um, well, I would say that uh, uh, freedom. Freedom. That, that the people of Penang uh, feel that they have the freedom to be themselves. They have the freedom not only in terms of civil and political rights, for instance, freedom of speech, but also freedom after speech. Mm -hmm. And also freedom to uh, realize their potential, freedom to have the equal opportunity uh, to make their dreams come true. I think that is one of our uh, proudest achievements. Uh, uh, for instance, I think you have heard of that Lithuanian artist, uh, Ernest Zakarovic. Mm -hmm. started uh, this uh, street art uh, in Georgetown mm -hmm. when yes. he painted uh, some of the street arts in other cities in Malaysia. They didn't like it, they erased it and um, they even threatened him with 2,000 ringgit fines. I see. But in Penang, you can draw anything that even criticize uh, the government and mm -hmm. if the drawing is good, uh, uh, I mean, you don't have to worry that your art will be erased. In fact, you, we may even give you 2,000 ringgit. I see. All right. NST reported in a survey conducted in 2013 that Penang was more expensive to live in compared to KL. So the same statement was also made by Henry Butcher Malaysia, an international asset consultant company. So what are the steps that your government have taken to help the young and poor in Penang? Well, I would not uh, know whether it is true that uh, it is more expensive in Penang than... Okay. But we don't deny the fact that uh, GST has also uh, caused the cost of living to go up. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we are continuing with our um, social uh, assistance programs, mm -hmm. uh, not just in terms of uh, cash handouts, but also to help the, uh, the poor. Uh, we have actually initiated uh, the first uh, unconditional cash transfer programs yes. in Malaysia where we want to make sure that every household would have a minimum of 790 ringgit per month. And that is the poverty line indicator. I so for, yes, for any household who, who, who actually uh, goes below, uh, below that figure, for instance, let's say, a household has 600 ringgit a month, the state government would then uh, grant 190 ringgit every month so that it matches I see. the 90 ringgit uh, level, minimum uh, income level for the household. So I think this program has, has helped to alleviate uh, some of the hardships, of, of course not completely uh, all, and uh, this is shown by the Gini coefficient. We've got the lowest Gini coefficient in the country, 0 0.37. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2009, our Gini coefficient was 0 0.42. I see. We have, re we have reduced it to 0 0.37. Mm. And that's only a space of three years. So oh. I think that, uh, well, that is uh, an achievement uh, in terms of reducing income inequality, but I would, I would admit that we still have a lot of hard work to do and we will continue to try to do what we can. You see, that's very interesting. So, also on Penang, the rumours of this PKR Penang coup, which you were reported saying that it was a result of the two Penang PKR camps, one under Pantai Jiraja State Assemblyman uh, Muhammad Rashid and the other under Bukit Tegah Assemblyman Ong Chin Wen, you stated that the choice to abstain from voting against an opposition motion is not something commended by the state government. So do you, do you personally think that Pakatan Harapan Aduns have no individual say when it comes to indiv uh, voting? When you are referring to a motion that is uh, accepted, 
has been in the public interest, uh, then we do not have any uh, objection. I see, if I even if you support the opposition motion, but let's say if that motion uh, uh, intends to uh, put the state into a, a risk of facing bankruptcy, I do not. I do not think bankruptcy is in the public interest. But uh, then again, uh, has a democratic government. We were very upset that we were not informed, or there was no notification whatsoever uh, of their intention to abstain. Uh, not only was I not informed, even Dr. Rashid, as the Deputy Chief Minister one, he was completely at a loss. He did not know what happened. And they did not participate in the debate. They did not express any views. And suddenly, uh, we felt that this was a concerted effort by the 5 PKR. They suddenly abstained. Um, and we felt that uh, this was not what a uh, member of government would be. Uh, we feel very strongly that uh, the land reclamation that was approved by Barisan National in the last government, mm -hmm. uh, they have to bear responsibility. If they want us to cancel these reclamation projects which they approve, they should have provided us an indemnity from the federal mm -hmm. government for any compensation payments made. But that was not done. So that's why we do not want to place the state uh, uh, into bankruptcy or to face the risk of such bankruptcy and that's why we do not agree with the motion. Uh, I also want to stress again that when you talk about land reclamation, the present state government had only approved 60 acres so far compared to Barca National's 3,241 acres. Mm -hmm. And we insisted that they comply with the legal requirements of uh, DEIA, public hearing and public feedback. So all this must uh, be complied with and these are federal laws. You cannot exempt or avoid uh, DEIA, a detailed environmental impact assessment studies or uh, public hearings. Uh, and they went through that process. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Malaysia now. Uh, PKR is now governing Selangor and DAP governing Penang. So what state do you think will be next for, for DAP? Well, I would think that the, the next state should be uh, Malaysia for Pakatan Rapat. I see. Because, All right. Um, you want to make sure that the Malaysian economy can be safe. You want to ensure hope for the future. And I think most important of all, you want Malaysians to live with dignity. I think as a Malaysian overseas, when you read about the 1 NDB or the 2.6 billion ringgit donation scandal, you feel quite ashamed that this is happening uh, to our country. I mean, how can uh, uh, our uh, foremost leader uh, do not deny that, th that there is such a donation in his personal bank account and can justify it by saying that he has not betrayed Malaysians. I think uh, not only Malaysians, but foreign investors, and especially look at the value of Ringgit, uh, the principal cause, I think one of the principal causes, I feel is, of course, is the handling of the one NDB as well as the 2.6 billion Ringgit donation scandal. And the uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, investors, I think they have passed judgment that uh, these uh, is not good for Malaysia and that's why despite the 2016 national budget uh, it has not restored uh, sentiments and neither has it uh, restored confidence uh, in the value of our ringgit. I see. So DP recently was heavily criticized by news portals and also Barisan National for this lack of race, racial diversity in the recent elections, the, the recent DAP elections. Also, Barista National actually accused DAP to place certain Malay candidates in the committee just for show. So how would you comment on this lack of race, race diversity? And is it considered a problem? And it, is it also on the agenda to solve it? To solve it? Well, we want to be Malaysian. And I think we have shown our commitment towards that by opening ourselves, opening DAP, opening our doors to everyone, not just Malays, but also uh, those from Sarawak, uh, our fellow Malaysians from Sarawak, Sarawak the Ibans, the Kadazans, the Dayaks, and also, of course, uh, the Indians and the Chinese as well. Uh, I mean, we got to 
if you are in, uh, you you want to gain political power, mm-hmm. you must gain the support from every community. You just cannot rely on one community. Uh, the whole uh, electoral makeup doesn't work that way. And if you look at DAP's struggle for the last uh, 50 years, mm-hmm. we, have, we have always been moderate and we have fought for every militia. I think you know my from my own personal experience, I went to prison because of fighting for justice for a Malay family. Mm-hmm. And I think we have shown through our policies uh, in Penang that we uh, look after everyone, regardless of race, regardless of religion. And even in terms of giving allegations to uh, Islamic affairs, we have doubled the allegations given compared to that given by the previous Barisan National Government. But yet, we are continuously criticized. For instance, the latest one, the, the latest a- allegation or the latest lie is that we uh, issue gambling licenses. Now, gambling licenses are issued by the federal government through the finance ministry. And yet, when they issue licenses and they collect all the gambling duties and gambling taxes, they don't get blamed. We who get nothing, we get blamed. So, I think this is just very nasty and very clever propaganda by Barca National. We must not forget that they are the uh, uh, chauvinistic and they try to develop, divide Malaysians by race. Malays, MCA only for Chinese. MIC only for Indian and parties like Gerakan, I don't know for who. So these are the, the, the causes of Malaysians. I think we should be open to all Malaysians. The time has come for Malaysians. And that's why uh, for the DAP, we are part of a coalition, Pakatan Harapan. And our choice as a leader, Dasri Awai Ibrahim, no, it's not because he's a Malay, but because he experience and he's committed and he has shown that when he was a deputy prime minister and the finance minister so we feel that uh, to to move forward i think we should not be uh, trapped in this uh, divisive culture of race religion and of course background this should serve to unite us race and religion serves to unite people not to divide people but unfortunately for those politicians in Barisan National, they use that to try to divide Malaysians. I have faith that Malaysians are bigger than that. Malaysians have bigger heart. They can look beyond that. I believe they will want to choose a coalition that can deliver and, of course, again, give hope and a brighter future to our kids. Thank you. Uh, a bit on Pakat and Harapan now. Free, Free Malaysian today reported that Azmin Ali said that Tony Poor's opinion on past remaining in Selangor means nothing. What are your comments regarding Azmin Ali's stance on past in Pakat and Harapan? I have not seen that uh, column yet. Uh-huh. But uh, whilst we, you know, definitely we have our views on that and uh, uh, we, will not, we, we may not agree with Azmin. But whilst we disagree with Azmin, uh, we continue to support him as the Chief of South Selangor. All right. So what differs Pakatan Harapan from Pakatan Rakyat? Uh, Pakatan Rakyat was... Hello. Pakatan Rakyat uh, comprised of three parties, mm-hmm. uh, PAS, PKR and DAP. Uh, Pakatan Rakyat. PAS, PKR and DAP. So when PAS decided to uh, break off uh, relations with DAP, that meant the end of Pakatan Rakyat. Um, without any one of the three parties, uh, Pakatan Rakyat ceases to exist. Mm-hmm. And it's very clear why PAN did not want to be in Pakatan Rakyat, or why they wanted to end their relations with DAP. You can see them uh, going closer and closer to in fact, past, uh, past leader, top leader, has refused to criticize or even uh, join in a no confidence motion against the Prime Minister. Mm-hmm. Despite his involvement in the YNDB, as well as in the 2.6 billion ringgit donation scandal. And past has also said that they want to be an advisor to Barisan National. Mm. 
uh, when has Barisan National ever listened to advice from an opposition party? PAS has fought AMNO for so many years and they have never listened to uh, PAS advice. Instead, uh, they have oppressed uh, PAS leaders. Sometimes I wonder whether rem they remember what happened in Kampung Mali. Do they remember the advice given by Tok Guru Nik Aziz that never merge or go into a coalition with AMNO because in his own experience when PAS joined the Barisan National Coalition in the 70s PAS was crushed and mercilessly uh, paid out so Tok Guru Nik Aziz knew who he could trust and who he could not trust mm -hmm. Tok Guru Nik Aziz never trusted AMNO or Barisan National Tok Guru Nik Aziz trusted DAP and Pakatan Right, yeah. In a recent article, it was said it was reported that you said that Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim is still your choice for prime ministership. So if Pakatan Harapan takes office while uh, Anwar Ibrahim is still in prison, how and would he be released and why is he still your choice? Well, uh, Datuk Sri Anwar is not my personal choice. It's a choice of Pakatan Harapan. I see. And I think he has shown through his sacrifice. Uh, despite all these allegations against him that he has held the fort he has continued the fight it's not easy to be in prison i mean i have gone to prison twice and that was when i was a young man imagine a 65 year old man struggling in prison i think this is not easy uh, trust me you 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 wouldn't wish it on your friends uh, for Anwar to continue that fight despite uh, the physical trauma and of course the mental anguish of being separated for, from his family mm -hmm. shows his commitment to bring about reforms and change in Malaysia. I think you've got to give Anwar that credit. Yes. I mean, we do not agree with many things, but we agree that Malaysia deserves better. Malaysia deserves better by getting rid of Barisan National. Let us have a free, clean, honest and prosperous Malaysia for all. So if Datuk Seri Najib was to step down, who would be an ideal Barisan National Prime Minister to resolve the current problems we're facing right now? Uh, I wouldn't want to speculate on that because <laughs> I think something that Barisan National has to work out. I still think that for Malaysia, the, the best choice is still Ahmad Ibrahim. Thank you. So moving on to something else, um, could you tell us what is the basis of rejecting the Barisan National's 2016 budget? Um, when we talk about the 2016 budget, it is uh, by rejecting it, it is a vote of no confidence. If you look mm -hmm. at many Western parliamentary democracy, uh, usually uh, rejecting the budget would necessitate the ruling coalition to resign and call for fresh elections. Now, we could not get our no confidence motion to be debated and put to a vote. So the best alternative would be to uh, reject the no confidence motion. Of course, there are some parties who say that by doing that, then uh, you know, you have economic consequences, the government will shut down, uh, the civil servants will not, got, will not get paid. I think that is completely untrue because you can always introduce another budget after that. Uh, and we still have a lot of time. So uh, this is an, an alternative to a no confidence motion. If they have allowed us to uh, debate and put the no confidence motion against the Prime Minister uh, to a vote, put it to a vote, uh, we will have done that and we will not have uh, attempted to defeat the budget. Were you active in politics in your student days? Oh yes, uh, well, not exactly very active, but I was the president of the Monash University Malaysian okay. Students. Uh -huh. I see. Um, who was your political idol back then or maybe now? Well, back then, I think some of my political idols, of course, uh, uh, John Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, and P. Ramli. Thank you. So last question for today. Why should the youth consider joining DAP? 
But I think it's a party of uh, ideas, a party of ideas, and a party of action. Uh, when you talk about ideas and ideas, I think you can see that some of the ideas that we have implemented in Penang is quite original, uh, especially in terms of investing in education. For instance, uh, we have started this uh, uh, robotic classes for young kids, uh, where we felt that uh, we should get children to be involved in science and tech at an early age. Uh, we want to we aspire to make Penang a center of excellence for science and technology, and uh, we have started these international science fairs, uh, these uh, science programs, even STEM teaching uh, for kids. You know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, uh, the the latest ep effort that we are quite proud of is to be the first state in Malaysia to introduce German dual vocational training. And you know, the, the German vocational training is the best in the world. And it's very different from traditional vocational training because those students, or they, uh, they not only uh, learn, but they apply and work at the same time. And the classroom is in the factory. So this is something that is uh, unique and of course, Many people um, associate the German vocational training to the German economic miracle where they rose up from the ashes of the Second World War to be the third largest economic power in the world. So we have started that program uh, in order to get um, uh, these uh, German companies to come to or, or the German vocational training to start in Penang. We have. Uh, uh, approved a grant of two million, two million ringgit to pay for the school fees, and the German companies because they are also learning and working in the factories at the same time, mm -hmm. they are giving students a monthly stipend of one thousand ringgit, so they don't have to pay school fees and yet they get one thousand ringgit monthly. In other words, they are paid to study. Mm -hmm. I think you are probably the only state in Malaysia which offers such a program where students yeah. are paid to study. Yeah, I think uh, so too. Uh, this is one of the, the ideas that we are that we have uh, uh, implemented. But we, we part, the DAP is not just a question of ideas. Ideas, of course, you look at our leaders with ideas. We are willing to go to prison. We are willing to offer sacrifices in order to fight for our cause, justice, freedom, democracy. But we are also a party of action. For instance, after the recent massive floods in Kelantan, mm -hmm. we organized a fundraising effort, we raised more than 2 million ringgit and we built homes for the flood victims. Not many homes, at least we built 45 homes for the flood victims. And these are led by a very idealistic uh, young leaders uh, such as uh, uh, Shafura Osman, a young Malay uh, DAP leader. Uh, so we have her, Shafura Osman, and also of course Diana, who happens to be in London now. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, and uh, these are leaders of our future, leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And they are young Malaysians who desire to see action, not just talk, but action. And uh, that's why I think Malaysians who are fired up by the, the, the passion of their ideas and ideas, they should join the DAP because we also offer action. And even in Sarawak, under our Impian Sarawak program, which is ably led by Tony Pua, we have actually uh, brought a, a, a big change. We have, brought, we have brought a difference to the lives of the uh, folk, uh, the uh, Ibans in Sarawak or even the Kadazans in Sabah. Uh, they have been without electricity and uh, water supply for the last 50 years since uh, the merger with uh, Malaysia. They, they, they have lived without water supply or electricity. So what we have done is to provide water supply and to provide electricity. You can imagine how big that change is. You can see the smile in their faces. And they smile not because their lives are better, but, but because with electricity and fresh water supply, you bring hope, you bring health, and most important of all, you bring the future in your hands. So do you think that more students should actively participate in politics? Because politics is seen as a remote um, arena that not everyone 
that it's not everyone's thing. So what would be one advice you would give to students or the youth who want to participate in politics? Well, I just take myself an example. When I was a, a student leader, I did not actively um, participate in political activities. I was focused on finishing my degree. And at the same time, I was uh, just uh, uh, well, trying to acquire more knowledge, reading books, so that I can be better equipped when I enter the real world. Uh, I would suggest that students, uh, if they can, of course, uh, they should be active. But even if they can't, I think they should um, keep a close tab on what is happening. Uh, be aware of current issues and read. Reading is fundamental. Uh, when you read, I think you can really expand not only your, broaden your horizons, expand your mind, but most important of all, it offers you alternatives. And no political party is perfect. Even the AP is not perfect. But I think amongst all the parties, we offer the best choice. We offer the best alternative for a better, a more prosperous, fairer, and more democratic Malaysia. Thank you, sir. Uh, I thank the Chief Minister of Penang. Is there anything you would like to add? Well, I would just like uh, to remind uh, all Malaysian students uh, to remember to come home. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't be we, no, because we are very concerned about the brain drain. Uh, remember that uh, even though uh, there are some who do not want two, two intelligent people around them, because you know, they are always afraid of being showed up uh, of what they really are. But uh, in Penang, uh, we definitely want you to come back. We want you to lead Malaysia uh, for our better future. Thank you. I agree.